It's really been the subject of our final table discussion. That's different from the way others in this tournament have played. There are those that, that play the player, looking across the table at the human at the other end. Yeah, a player like a Daniel Negreanu will stare across and try to find out what's going on in your head. A player like Chris or Andy will forget you're even there, flip on the internal calculator and try to find out if they've got enough of an edge to push all in or make a big call. Chris is re-raised here with pocket queens. You know, maybe that's part of the reason Another 60. that these two have had such friendly table talk. They're less concerned with reading one another, in fact. And Chris Ferguson takes the lead. Well, for Chris, having the lead in the middle of a championship match is easy. Having the lead at the end is what's given him trouble. The final match is set, playing for the first ever national heads-up title. Chris Ferguson has evened up this championship match. He's going all in. Phil Helmuth wins the championship. Oh. And the river. Ferguson goes up 1-0. I don't have a good hand, but I got the best hand. We got the best hand. I'd like to play a third one. I'm all in. I call. Chris Ferguson with another amazing performance. Runner up for the second straight year. You know, making the final table three out of four years is a terrific accomplishment, but if Chris loses this, his legacy will be more like Susan Lucci at stretch. the daytime Emmys. Well, she had a real dry spell, but let's not forget, she eventually won one. That said, I'm sure that Chris is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on himself here. Believe me. He doesn't want to go home a loser for the third time. Watch out for the cameras. I just want to warn you. Those cameras back a little bit. No idea what Andy Block is doing here. He's doing his Johnny Carson, you know, let's, let's uh, drive it to commercial moment. Yeah, where's Doc Severinsen? Uh, Chris is a slight lead. Suited four deuce for Andy here as so we get back to the poker portion of the telecast. And ace nine for Chris. <laughs> Andy feeling a bit relaxed. Coming after Chris with a raise. He's got deuce four suited. And the flop. Pair of fours for Andy, but Chris flops a heart draw. Chris is checked. Andy bets out 25,000. This is the exact kind of situation that Andy has been check-raised in on more than one occasion so far in this second match. And there it is again from Chris. And on cue, Chris puts in the check-raise to 85000 And he folds. I think Chris is on to something here in this second match. No, not. here's where I need to get lucky and uh, make a flush on the turn against your set. I didn't have a set. <laughs> no, I'm not that hand. Well, I know. I mean, you're next. I mean, just in general. Hand. You're not that far. I mean, back. this hand. Oral, I know you're here rooting on Andy. He actually eliminated you from the tournament, but what should Chris be doing right now, playing him? He's down one nothing. Well, you know, just watching it, I hope neither one is avoiding defeat and is going for the win. Chris has had two times where he's been at this position and has not won, so now he's down 1-0. He could be trying to avoid defeat and embarrassment. Do you think he's feeling the pressure? Well, I would feel that, yeah, there's some pressure there, and he's hoping for good cards plus to outplay him. And then you look at Andy. He's never been in this position. He doesn't have a World Series bracelet, and, and this is the highest like value that he's been. Into with a chance to win something up 1-0. You know, a lot of the pros here really commended how you played. What do you think you can do better to be to become a better poker player? Well, these guys now have kind of befriended me and are like, I've got more phone numbers of poker stars than I do baseball <laughs> players. So I think I've got a lot more coaches, but what Mark Gregorich did and Gavin Smith and Bill Edler, I'll never be able to repay him. Well, we loved having you here at Heads Up Poker. We hope you come back next year. Thank oh, you, Earl. It's been awesome. Leanne, thanks. A great run by Oral Hershiser. It came to an end in the quarterfinals when he lost to Andy Block. Blinds have gone up here to 10 and 20,000. Andy has called. And Chris, 9 8 checks. And the flop. Big flop for Andy. Two pair. Ace, Trey, King. Well, it's going to be hard for Andy to get any action from Chris in this situation unless Chris decides to bluff at this pot. Six of, Six of spades on the turn. Chris has no spade in his hand, and look at this. Checking once on the flop has earned Andy at least an extra 30000 as Chris is drawing dead in this pot. Andy calls. And the river. Eight of clubs. Oh, and that could give Andy some more action. Well, Chris does finally make a pair here. 
but he's probably going to put Andy on some type of spade draw, knowing that he won't get called if he bets. Unless it's by a better hand, he wisely checks. Andy bets 60,000. You know, it's so easy, Matt, for those of us at home looking at the hole cards to make this decision. But all Chris has to go by is how the betting has come down. Could look like a busted spade draw here. Two pair. Andy this two pair is very, very, very good. Chris made the call and Andy took down the pot. That's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> the only thing. It was it. You weren't drawing down it. I'm probably going to. I actually was going to bet, bet the river. Actually, not even. I was just. You were drawing dead and you got there. Well, after a tricky check on the flop, Ferguson pays off block on the river. Chris donates 110,000 in chips to the Andy Block Foundation, moving the chip count back to almost even. Welcome back to Caesars Palace, home to the Las Vegas Strip's biggest stars, including newcomer Bette Midler. Back at our final table, where Chris still has a Wait, slight well, lead. You got me to bluff my chips off and then call you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> bluff and then call. Andy leads one match to none in this best two out of three queen ten for Andy here. Let's make it 40. He'll put in a raise to 40,000. And he raises to 40,000. 10 9 for Chris. He's dominated, though he doesn't know it. And Chris calls. Chris calls. That raise to 40,000 is the minimum raise with the blinds at 10 and 20. And the flop, queen four, jack, top pair for Andy. Open-ended straight draw for Chris Ferguson, though. Andy bets 50, Chris has checked, Andy bets 50,000. Let's see if Chris is going to pull off another one of these check raises that have worked so well for him so far. And Chris has raised roughly a third of his stack to 200,000. That is a pretty healthy raise. This time, however, Andy's hand is strong right. enough to make a call. Andy's and Andy in. moves all in. Now, Chris had to expect that eventually this would happen. He wasn't going to get away with it forever. Is this the spot Chris wants to use to make his stand? Down one to none in the best two out of three. No, it is not. He folds. Andy moves all in, gets Chris to fold his draw, a play that probably wasn't on one of his old poker charts. For years and years, I carried a little chart around with me in my wallet. There were 13 by 13 charts for each starting hand in Texas Hold'em. You have two numbers for each of them. One number is what stack size you should move all in with, and the other is what stack size you should call with. I don't actually have it memorized as much as I probably should. So occasionally I'll be sitting at the table and trying to think, well, is it mathematically right for me to make this call? I'll leave it to an expert blackjack player to create a chart for poker, but that leads to the question, can you play poker with a chart? You know, I'd love to answer no in this spot, but look, it's Chris and Andy, both math-based players, sitting at the final table, and Chris is in his third appearance here, so it's pretty tempting to say yes at this point. And Chris has moved all in with suited Queen Jack. First one, you're in good shape. Pocket threes Second for one. Andy. Okay, I call. And he's going to call. We have an all in call. You got the best hand. But I got, it's a coin flip. I got suited connectors in the middle. <laughs> yeah, you might be a favorite. Andy has Chris covered. This could be it for Chris Ferguson. Classic race situation. Okay, we'll take a look. Pocket pair against two over cards. Queen Jack of Diamonds. Oh, at least I have a diamond. diamond. Notice the card player magazine percentages. Chris Ferguson's Queen Jack of Diamonds, a slight favorite over Andy Block's pocket tray. Make it exciting. And the flop. That's exciting. And Chris Three. pairs his no, queen. No, six, queen, that's five. Not that's not exciting. <laughs> it's exciting to me. It's a deuce or a seven. Chris has become a much bigger ones. favorite. Here's the turn. Well, a three is Andy's favorite card in the deck. That would ice things. Oh. Six outs. Fourth Street, seven of clubs. 
three or a four will, a three or a four will knock out Chris Ferguson 